Hi, I'm Michael Wilde, this is a blue cat, and we're on part two, part two of creating this cat asset thing. So today we're going to be going through how I created the displacement inside of Mari. Um, I use textures from texturing.xyz to kind of lay down a displacement which I then go on to use to create a diffuse colour and other maps with. So we've got Mari here and I'm starting off. I've loaded what I created in the part one, if you haven't seen that, head on over to create the substance colour textures that I did. So I'm just dropping down a base colour for this skin and then I'm going to get into painting the displacement. So why am I painting the displacement first? Often when you're texturing you'll be creating your diffuse colour first and foremost. But because the detail of the bumps and stuff for the skin on this are going to inform the colour, I found it was going to be easier to create the skin colour afterwards and create the displacement first. So what I'm doing at the beginning, I'm going to line up some tiled textures that you can see me popping down here. And I'm going to use those to just set up a base kind of bump or displacement over the entire thing just to get a good scale. And then later on, I'm going to be doing some hand painted details and I'm going to mix those two things together. And that's going to give me my base displacement, which I can then take into ZBrush or I can use in Mari as a mask to then paint the skin details and everything lines up nicely. So why am I doing a displacement inside of Mari instead of inside of ZBrush? Well, I think Mari is great for it to set up a base displacement or bump, especially with skin, because it's non-destructive and I can change things quite quickly. Mari is going to give me so much more detail. All my UDIMs in this are 8K. So it means that instead of having to do a really, really high poly version inside of ZBrush, I have got all this extra detail in all these pixels, and then I can add additional ZBrush details on top of that. And you can see now I've got the shader, I've got all my channels set up. So that base tiled bump that I'm setting up there with the tiling image is being applied to the shader. So I can kind of see in real time how it's looking, what's working, what isn't, if the scale is too much, if it's not enough, if it's not enough actual bump or displacement off the surface. And I've always got reference up, checking against it for the scale. So there in that reference, I can quite clearly see the size of the bumps on the skin. So I can use that as a good estimation. So because this is a cat from a comic book called Saga, which is great, you should go and read it. So it's a little bit fantastical, but grounding everything in reality is always going to help sell whatever you're making. If you are making something fantastical or unrealistic, magical, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just adding a base gray node here, which I'm going to then paint on top of with a transparent channel. Um, that way I've got a base value for everything and then I can use these texturing XYZ scans to project the details on top of. I'm also putting down an ambient occlusion because when you're painting with nodes, it flattens everything. There's no easy way unless you look through a shader to view it with, with um, specular data on. So one tip I like to do is just paint with an ambient occlusion merge slightly over and that way I can just see the forms of my model a little bit better. So I started painting and my images looked a little bit too light and that's because the view transform wasn't acting correctly. So what I've done is I've now put that merge node into the bump channel, which is set to scalar and it's gonna work properly. And I'm just making sure all those images in my image manager are set up as scalar data. If all that color space talk went over your head, I'm gonna have a new video coming out soon about color space. It's a long topic, it gets quite in depth. So I am gonna avoid talking about that in this series, but it's coming so you can subscribe for that. And that is what we call a plug. So Texturing XYZ is great. They've got some really good textures on there, um, some really good scans that's great for displacement. That said, you don't have to do it with that. You could be hand sculpting this. You could be using alphas inside of ZBrush. You could be bringing alphas inside of Mari. I'm just using these because I used them on previous shows. I used it on Elise Battle Angel and found that it was really great for getting skin details there. So I just wanted to try it. Um, you don't need to go and get those. They're not the cheapest, um, but they are great for, I think they're worth what they cost. Um, so yeah, this isn't like a advert or sponsorship or anything for them. I just think they gave me really stellar results. So um, they're a little bit of a fiddly setup because you have to put different things into the R, G and B channel. And I'm not gonna go into much detail on that. They've got some really great tutorials on the website for that specifically. So I have already split those channels out in this video. And that's why these displacement images that I'm painting with have got some blue and red tones to them because I've got cavity and displacement inside the different channels of the image. Cool, so now that color space stuff is all set up correctly, I'm getting my mid grays looking right. 
I'm just gonna start projecting. So I'm using these images that have got face data to kind of just, I'm gonna block in some projections originally to get displacement everywhere, see what's working, see what isn't. I'm making sure I've got a hard brush. You don't want a soft brush, when, especially when you're painting displacement because you don't want a soft fade between points. Otherwise you're gonna get weird fading and kind of just softness in your displacement in places. That said, you do get some problems when using a hard brush, you will get hard lines. So painting displacement is actually quite a tricky operation I find making sure that everything kind of blends together can be quite difficult and there is a lot of cleanup in this. So to begin with, I'm just blocking out really rough forms. I'm taking, so these are human faces I'm using. I think I bought the Thanos bundle that they had, I think they had 50% off at the time. So I got a few faces and a few different parts of the human body. Um, I think this is a woman's face to begin with. I end up using the man's face quite a lot more because under the chin in that area on the scan, there's a lot of stubble kind of rash. And that's really great for the reference I'm looking at of cats, especially Sphinx cats that I'm using. When you can see their skin, they've got a lot of bumps as opposed to humans. On human faces, a lot of the pores go in, whereas it, it seems that cats' pores kind of bump out a little bit more. So while I block this in now, later on, I do kind of change that out a little bit. And I'm just seeing how that looks in the shader now. And kind of just getting the detail in this scan that I'm projecting to marry up with my model. So I've got these creases of the kind of fat folds of the cat and I just want to get some of those creases in the textures that I'm using to line up with that and that's really going to help sell it. If I'm viewing that channel you can see I've got all these gaps so that's why I'm merging it on top of a 50% grey channel. That's what those two paint nodes are at the beginning. I've got a 50% grey and then my projection merged on top. And I make sure that ambient occlusion that I'm using to view is just previewed and it's not going through I'm disabling it when I'm actually viewing the shader because I don't want that ambient occlusion to further displace. So when I export the final thing, it will not be there. I do delete it. And I'm also just playing with the spec response, the specular roughness of the shader so that I can see it a little bit better. Because I haven't started doing that, I, get the, I do the spec roughness after the diffuse color. So I'm just putting in a rough value now so that I can see it quite well. And I'm changing the light rig as well inside of Mari, the environment light, just to get a better spec response purely for visual reasons so I can see what I'm doing better. So yeah, a lot of this video is just me projecting. I do speed up at points. If you do have any questions that I don't cover, then feel free to leave them as a comment below and I'll get back to you. But I think just watching it, it should all fairly make sense. And like I said, these texturing XYZ images have got multi-channels, so I do split them out. So if you ever see them in black and white, that's because I split out the red channel, which is what I use for my displacement. And then the G channel, the green, is what I use for cavity. And then I've got the blue channel, the final channel, for a kind of micro bump that you can also use. And so here I've shuffled out the channels and you can see these two images just aren't lining up. The mid gray isn't correct. So what I end up doing is I take that back into Photoshop and I just change that to make sure it, it does line up but for now I kind of avoid that scan. So I've only painted roughly on one side of the face to begin with. Uh, it's a fairly symmetrical model, the UVs aren't exactly the same and the topo isn't exactly the same, but I could use the mirror projection if I wanted to, so I'm just setting that up now. That's a new tool in Mari 4.5, I believe, or maybe it was Mari 4. Uh, that's a great feature now for painting on two sides of the model at once. Rather than having to copy and paste over patches, you can now paint with symmetry, which is was definitely missing for a long time, so I'm glad it's there. So now I'm just dropping down some tiled textures that I've got. These are just tiled skin displacements. Again, these were from Texturing XYZ, but you don't have to get them from there. There's plenty of tiled skin textures online that you can find and download, buy wherever you want to get them from. The ones that I bought were the ones that I thought looked most like the reference, so cat skin is quite bumpy. So I was using a lot of those. And here I'm just testing out a lot at once. I'm going to pump them through a shader that I've just copied and pasted from the previous one, just to see how it looks and what's gonna work best for me. So I've done that hand projecting with the scans, but I'm also gonna set up a tiled procedural displacement, and that way I can just merge between the two. So this way, if there's any bits that are a little bit hard to paint, or I just wanna quickly put something, block something on, then I can use this tiled. So I'm just putting these tiled textures into the bump one at a time to see what looks nice. 
So I'm quite liking that one there. I think that looks quite nice for the nose, especially the nose has got a very distinct look compared to the rest of the skin. So I'm probably gonna use a tile texture for that. So yeah, I'm gonna use this paint channel and I'm just gonna set up a mask for this nose area and I'm gonna use that tile texture there. So what I've done is I've set up a base gray color and then I'm merging this tile texture nose on top using a mask that I'm now setting up. And using the mirror projection, then I've been able to set up both sides at once. And I can turn that on and off as I go. So I've got reference off screen and I'm just setting up that mask so that it looks right. Then I'm viewing that in the bump. And that's looking pretty good. And then I'm just going to test out these other tile textures, see what I think works as just a base for the rest of the skin. So there's a couple here that I'm quite liking. So what I've done is I've then merged the nose on top of one of those bits. And that way I've got those two tile textures, but only one of them on the nose. And I can use this now as just the base procedural displacement that I can use the hand painted one on top of. And so this is great because I can use this to paint out seams in certain parts. I can put this on or yeah, whatever I really want to do with it. It's just handy to kind of have. So I'm just playing with the levels of those two so they merge a bit together. The nose is a fair bit more bumpy if you look at reference of cats. So what I've done is I've kind of contrasted down the one for the skin and then I'm keeping the nose one quite heavy. And just updating that mask as I go, painting black and white so that it's in certain areas and not in certain areas. And there's a couple of these skin textures I'm actually quite liking for the procedural skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge two on top of each other to give me even more breakup. And I'm just gonna use a cloud noise procedural to break that up. And that way I get even more breakup on top of that. And you can't as obviously see the two tile textures repeating because they're mixing in a little bit nicer together. So now I'm just testing a purlin instead, see if that will give me better results than a noise or a turbulence as well. Mari's got some really great procedurals. And if you've got the Mari expansion pack as well, that has probably some of the best procedural elements that you can drop down. I'm working with the base 4.5 here. So yeah, in terms of procedurals, I think that's looking pretty good now. So now I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and I'm gonna go back to hand painting the projected version. So what I'm doing is I'm just using a backdrop node to differentiate between the projected version and the procedural skin displaced version. And then we're gonna merge those two together. So for now I was just testing this projected version on one of the patches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try flipping that over to the other patch. So the UVs are pretty similar, they're not identical. I didn't take too much care with it, but I can copy from one patch to the other so copying with nodes is a little bit fiddly. 
sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. You kind of have to pump it through a channel sometimes, or at least through a merge node, and then you have to flip and copy the merge node rather than the actual paint layer. That's something I'll do a quick two minute video on in itself because it's a really handy trick to know when you're using the node graph and it's not overly obvious when you're first doing it. So now I'm just filling in. So I've got that on both sides and it's gonna need some cleanup later on, but it's just good to see it everywhere. And just filling in some of these gaps I've got now. So I'm viewing that red channel on its own. I can see I've got some quite obvious lines because I'm using a hard brush and those I really wanna avoid. So just cleaning up as I need to. And this is really sped up now. We're at 500% speed. So I'm just adding more details, more wrinkles where they would be. The good thing about this as well is I'm going to take this into ZBrush afterwards and I can further add things like scars, dimples and stuff like that, an extra layer of it to later on. So you don't need to worry too much about this stage, but it's just a really good base to get going with. And then I'm just gonna quickly fill in the neck. I've got the edge mask. It's a bit funny there, so I'm getting some weird shearing, so I'm just setting that up. And I've still got this mirror projection on now, but I'm gonna need to go in and break that up afterwards, so it's quite obviously not symmetrical. Now I'm just filling in the ears, making sure I'm looking at reference as I go along to see what those surfaces look on the inside. Under the eyes, adding some more wrinkle detail underneath. So these areas I end up adding an additional layer of sculpt to anyway, and I think they change a lot. The model does change a little bit later on. So I'm not being too precious with any of this stuff. Aware that if I need to make a change to the model and it's gonna look better, then it's just something I have to do. So then I'm just viewing that through the shader again when I've got something I'm quite happy with everywhere. You can see I've got quite a harsh line there that I'm gonna to need to clean up later. And I'm just checking for any other bits that are quite obviously needing cleanup. And then what I'm doing is I'm merging my tile texture on top of that. So for places like the nose that I know I'm gonna be using the tile setup gone ahead and done that. And just checking it under different lighting rigs. That's super helpful, especially with displacement, seeing how the spec response works and if it's something that I'm happy with. So I'm fairly happy with that, but I need to go back and clean stuff up. So what I've done is I'm viewing just that displacement layer, but I've cranked up the contrast to really see where I've got some edges that need clean up or any bits that are stretched or just anything that isn't working as a texture. So here I've definitely got some seams between different parts of the displacement texture that I was projecting. They just don't blend nicely. So I'm just finding bits on these projections that can do a better job of that. So I've got another little bit here that isn't just isn't sitting well together. I've got lines where two bits of the of the scan that I'm projecting haven't met up nicely. So painting on the UV view and the ortho view at the same time is super handy to make sure that you can get the best of both of those perspectives to paint with. And 
And so finally now I, what I'm doing is I'm setting up the mask between the procedural and the projected version. So I'm painting on some of this procedural version just to break it up a little bit and in areas that aren't merging too well. Instead of cleaning them up, then I can just put some procedural stuff on top just to save myself the hassle of doing that. And you can see there, I've got the nose area. So that's all procedural tiled rather than the hand projected stuff. And then I'm just viewing, disabling that mask to see if it's working in places, if there's bits that I do or don't like it. And just playing with the contrast of those tiled nodes as well to make sure that every, everything sits in, to make sure they've got the same levels of height and the same kind of black levels and white levels in that image so they don't look like they're obviously sticking out. So there they look a little bit strong. So I'm just gonna play with the opacity maybe of the merge node or of a contrast or a levels on them. just to make it look as seamless as possible. And that's a good thing about procedural texturing is all I need to do is just change that mask layer. I don't have to go in and repaint it. With that hand painted projection layer, I did end up having to repaint it a few times. I did change the model a little bit, a few tweaks and proportions, and that meant a bit of repainting. But with the tiled stuff, I didn't have to do that once. So that about sums up this part. This was mainly just looking at Mario displacement, a little bit of projection. And then in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that into ZBrush and use that to inform a layer of sculpting and additional detail that I can then take back into Mari, do my final diffuse and secondary pass textures, and then get rendering with that. So hopefully this was helpful. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. If you've got any videos you'd like to see, also do that. My name has been Michael Wilde. This has been Texturing Displacement in Mari 4.5. And take it easy. Have a good one.